In this video, we are going to introduce the Timoshenko beam, which offers a slightly more flexible beam formulation than the Euler Bernoulli beam um, introduced earlier. As described in the Euler Bernoulli beam video, beams are structures that have one dimension that is much bigger than the other two, allowing to consider the cross section to be rigid. The same assumptions for the Euler Bernoulli beam are used for the Timoshenko beam, except that the plane sections that are perpendicular to the neutral axis of the beam are forced to stay plane, but not necessarily perpendicular to the neutral axis. In the formulation here, we will assume small deformations and linear elastic isotropic materials ignoring Poisson's ratio. This diagram depicts the possible deformation of a beam structure according to the Timoshenko beam formulation. You can observe from the figure that the cross sections that were originally perpendicular to the geometric centroid or the line of the geometric centroids are no longer perpendicular. So you can see these, these lines which were originally perpendicular to the line of centroids is no longer perpendicular after deformation. They are rotated by a shear ang angle gamma. Let's assume a point with original coordinates x1, p, x2, p, and x3, p. Assuming that plane sections remain plane but not necessarily perpendicular, we can find the new locations of the point as a function of the two uh, deformation functions y, which is the displacement of the line of the geometric centroids, and gamma, which is the shear deformation. So you can see here we have y and gamma. The formulation here is exactly similar to the Euler Bernoulli except for the addition of this angle gamma, which describes the additional rotation of the cross section. In the Euler Bernoulli beam, gamma is equal to zero. We will set psi as the total cross section rotation, which is equal to uh, dy by dx or y prime plus gamma. The displacement then, when we replace y, uh, y prime plus gamma with psi, can be written as a function of the cross section of rotation, epsi. Assuming small deformations, sine psi is equal to psi and cosine psi is equal to 1, we can then uh, simplify this relationship as shown. The gradient of u which will be used to calculate the strain can simply be calculated from uh, u, very similar to how we did this in the Euler Bernoulli beam. The strain is the half the gradient of u plus the trans its transpose is equal to this uh, uh, matrix. And notice that the shear angle gamma appears naturally in the equations in the strain matrix for epsi one over uh, for uh, 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 the, the strain component uh, 1, 2. The constitutive law can now be used to replace the strains with the stresses. Assuming linear elastic, this is the epsilon 1, 1, as shown in the previous slide from the strain matrix, sigma 1, 1 is equal to Young's modulus multiplied by epsilon 1, 1, and epsilon 1, 2 is equal to negative gamma over 2. Sigma 1, 2 is equal to kg multiplied by twice uh, epsilon 1, 2. So kg uh, multiplied by gamma or negative kg multiplied by gamma. In beams, we prefer to write the equation in terms of the, in, in terms of the internal forces. The internal forces here are the moment and the shear. The moment is introduced as the integral of the stress sigma 1, 1 multiplied by x2. Uh, by x2. And we already know the value of sigma on one from the previous slides. When we substitute, we can find the equation for the moment. And we show that we can show that the moment is equal to E multiplied by E multiplied by the first derivative of the C, which is the cross-sectional uh, rotation. In the, the difference between the Timoshenko beam and the Euler Bernoulli beam is that in the Euler Bernoulli beam, this was EI the second derivative of Y, but here this is EI multiplied by the first derivative of Ipsi.
we also have a relationship between the shear force and the shear strain gamma. V is equal to a K multiplied by A multiplied by G multiplied by gamma. This K is a cross, uh, is a factor for the uh, cross section. As this formulation is uh, an average for form formulation, the, the, the shear stress is considered an average stress. And to be able to reconcile this assumption and the actual deformation, this constant k has been introduced. It is function of the cross-section shape, um, and it relates the shear force or the shear stress with the shear deformation uh, uh, gamma, and it's basically a, a factor multiplied by the area. The equilibrium equation gives the first equation that is needed to be solved uh, in, uh, to find the displacements of the B. Here, the equilibrium equation EI, the third derivative of C with respect to the x1 cubed, is equal to Q. Remember, for the Euler Bernoulli beam, this was the fourth derivative of Y. But here, this is the third derivative of the cross-sectional rotation. We have two uh, deformation parameters, epsi and y. So we need another equation. The second equation is the relationship between uh, y and epsi. We know that y prime is equal to psi minus gamma. We know y prime is dy by dx x1, and gamma is equal to the shear divided by uh, this factor k multiplied by a multiplied by g. And we can also replace v with uh, its function in epsi and we end up with the second equation that relates y prime with epsi and so we have those two equations that would allow us to solve for epsi and y given some boundary conditions by integrating those uh, two equations we end up with uh, these two equations and you can see that integration produces four uh, constants that are needed in order to find the, the cross-sectional rotation and the displacement of the beam. The four boundary conditions are given in terms of m or psi, the shear or the displacement on one end or on the other end. After the, the boundary conditions and the deformation functions are the boundary conditions are specified and the deformation functions are found, the stresses along the beam can be given by this stress matrix exactly similar to the owner Euler Bernoulli beam. And the strain matrix is given uh, by this form. Um, uh, the only difference between this strain matrix and the one that appeared in the Euler Bernoulli beam is the existence of this uh, shear uh, strain. There are many examples uh, online that show how to implement the equations described here and the students are encouraged to uh, uh, look at those examples and download the mathematical code and implement them themselves. The Temushenko beam is termed shear flexible as it provides a more flexible formulation than the Euler Bernoulli beam. In particular for thick beams the Euler Bernoulli beam can be very stiff because it does not allow the shear deformation as depicted in the shown figure. You can see here, this is a depiction of the displacement of a beam uh, assuming it's cantilever. This would be what the Euler Bernoulli beam solution look like and this is what the Timoshenko beam would look like. Uh, these uh, visit the website and interact with the example um, which uh, shows the displacement according to the values of EI and the uh, uh, cross-sectional properties K and A, and the material property G and EI. 